In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and edit YouTube videos using Canva. Now, Canva is one of my favorite design tools, but not really known for its video editing capabilities. So most people don't realize how surprisingly easy it is to use Canva to edit videos, and it doesn't have to cost you a thing. So if you're looking for a simple and affordable video editing solution, then this could be perfect for you. All you need is a free Canva account, and that's it. So let's jump straight into the laptop and go through it step by step. We're going to cover everything that you need, as you can see on the screen, from the basics to all the added jazz, like stock footage, animations, fancy text effects, and stay tuned to the end where I'm going to show you an amazing new voiceover feature that will really help you level up your videos. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is sign up for a Canva account. So just go to canva.com and register on there. Now I'm actually using a paid account because it gives me loads more options and advanced functionality and I use this tool pretty much every day. But everything that I'm going to show you, you can do with a free account too, so don't worry about that. We then need to choose a template. Now luckily Canva kind of preset and pre-make all these templates so you don't have to worry about what dimensions you need to use because you're going to have different video formats depending on what social media platform you're using. For example, mobile video is what you would use for your TikTok videos, whereas video, this plain video here, is what we would use for YouTube. So I'm actually just going to click on that video and you can get to these videos by clicking in that button or in the search, you can just type in video or you can click on create a design and type in video again and it will give you all the various options that you can use. So there's loads of ways of getting to the exact same thing. I'm just going to click on this one for now. Now even better, once you're in the video, you've got loads more templates in there as well. So if you scroll down on this left hand side with the template section, it actually gives you loads of kind of pre-made ones that you could just change if you wished. So you can actually speed up the process of creating your videos. So just in case you didn't notice, the start of this video, I actually used this template. I'm just going to click on it, and then if you click on Apply All Four Pages, you can choose one page at a time if you wish. Now all I did was I used this, and I just changed the colours, I changed the words, I added my own images and put a few different slides in on my own. But it just meant that I created that opening sequence much quicker than I would have normally done starting from scratch. So just as a bit of a fun example that we can walk through, we're actually going to create a little pretend video and we're going to do it fun facts about cats. Now we'll just go back to Canva and we're going to start from scratch. We're going to start with a blank canvas. On the left hand side, you've got various different options. The one that we want is videos. Once you open videos, it's got various different categories, but the main thing you're going to use is this search videos button. And for our example, I'm just going to type in cats. So that gives us tons of different examples that you can scroll down and pick out the ones that you want. And in the bottom left hand corner, it'll give you a number. Now that's the duration of the video and we can adjust that and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But a couple of tricks to show you. So one of them, when we hover over a video, you'll see that it says free there. Now not everything is free, some of them are premium ones like that one which says pro. Now if you're using a free account, obviously you only want to see the free ones otherwise you're going to be wasting a load of time. If you click on this settings button in the search bar, you can actually filter it to the free ones from there. So click on free and apply filters. Another trick is when you hover over the actual video, if there's one that you really like, there's three buttons in the top right hand corner, if you click on that, that's going to show you who, who's put that video on there, who the contributor is, and it'll also show you the keywords for it. But if you think that this person's really good and you like their style, you can click on the view more by, and it will show you all of the videos that one person has uploaded. That works really well when you're adding graphics and icons. But for now, we're just going to add this photo in here because I quite like the look of this uh, little grey fella. So once you click on the video, it's going to insert it into the middle of your canvas. Now, I actually want that to be full screen, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can use the circles in the corners and click and drag, and that will resize the video. Or you can just right click and set video as background. So we've now got that video in the background. And if you see in the middle, there's a little play button where we can just press play and watch the video back. Now it could be that you just cannot find a good video to use and you want to upload your own, or it could be that you want to upload a video of yourself, who knows. So on the left hand side, you've got this uploads button. If you click on that, you've then got upload media. Now two websites that I think are pretty good for more stock footage are pexels.com and pixabay.com. So all you need to do is you just need to look for a suitable video on either of these sites, and then click on that video, 
On the right hand side, just double check the licensing. So in this case, it's free for commercial use, no attribution required. Some of them may ask you to attribute it to the actual, um, the owner of that footage. But in this case, we're good. So we can just click on free download, choose the quality that we want to download. And then if we go back to Canva and just click on upload media and then device, Select the video we've just downloaded to our machine and click on open. And we can just click on it and add it into our video. Now if you want to replace the one that you've already got, you can just click on, right click on it and click on replace background. I don't know, I quite like this guy, so we're going to keep this guy. Now when we're creating our YouTube video, we're obviously going to want these clips to only last for a certain amount of time. So this one, if we click on the video, it shows you how long that video lasts. And it's actually 16.7 seconds, so there's a few ways to change this. So we can actually click on that 16.7 seconds. And these little purple bars, if we drag and drop them, that changes the start and the end. And we can then click on the middle and we can actually move it around as well. So that clip's now 10 seconds long, and we just click on done. Now what you might have also noticed is at the bottom we've got this new video editing timeline, which is really, really useful. When you've got multiple slides in here, it will show them all in sequence. And what we can do is we can just hover over the edge of that, click, and then just drag it. So we can actually change the duration there as well, which is really, really handy and useful. So one other thing we can do with this timeline editor is we can add transitions from one slide to the next. So I'm just going to add another slide in, I'm just going to pick another random cat video. So as you can see our video now consists of two different scenes. In the middle you've got this little plus sign. If we go to that you can either add a page or add a transition. And a transition is exactly like it sounds. It's how one frame transitions into the next frame. So if you click on the actual effect you can then change the duration or you can change the direction that that slide effect works as well. One other really useful feature is that you've got this play button. So if we wish to actually see how that video looks at the moment, we can just press play. You can actually click on different parts of the actual scene and you see this little cursor. It will then play from that actual point rather than making you watch the entire thing over and over again each time. So the next thing we want to do is add some text to our video. Now if you click on text in the menu choice, scroll down, you've got lots of different combinations that they've actually put together for you. So you can just use these. A lot of these do say pro, like I've said before, so you might have to find the free ones as well. But it might just save you a little bit of time. But if not, then don't worry, it's something we can really easily put together anyway. We just click on one of these, add a heading, subheading or body text. It doesn't really matter which one that you choose. I'm just going to choose a heading. Again, we can move that around by just clicking and moving or hovering over this little uh, multi-directional button. We can make it bigger either by changing the font size at the top or again by using the little circles and just click and resize. Now in this case, let's put a heading in there for our actual uh, opening of our video. You can change the font type, the size, the colour. Some fonts you can put in bold and italic and you can also capitalise it as well. And you can also add different effects to your text as well by clicking on this effects button. So at the moment there's no effects on there. You can actually curve the, uh, the font if you wish. So it looks like it's kind of going around his head a little bit there. Or one that I like to use is this lift. And that lift, it just puts a slight kind of shadow in behind the letters. And that shadowing on the right background, it just gives it a bit of depth and just looks a little bit, uh, just looks a little bit nicer to be honest, but it gives it a bit of depth so that it's sat slightly off the actual canvas. As you move things around, you might see these little purple lines appearing. That purple line just means that it's in the center of our canvas. So it's a good one for just um, making sure that your layout's good. So the next thing we want to do is add some graphics. Now graphics can be photos, but they can also just be little kind of cartoons or visual effects. On the left hand side, we're going to click on elements. Now once we click on that, it's going to show us various different things. We've got lines, shapes, graphics, photos, videos, charts, uh, and frames as well. And I'm going to show you some of the more common ones to use. So I actually use shapes and the rectangle a lot as well. And one of the main reasons I use it is just to put some separation in for, the, uh, for any text that we've got. 
So just as an example, if we drag that rectangle up to the top, and we're just going to use these little markers at the side just to resize it, and I'm going to change the color. But it could be that you wanted to use a picture of anything in here really. So let's again, let's have a search for cats. And we've got photos, graphics, videos. We're going to narrow it down. We want to use a graphic. Now do you see if we scroll down, we've got all these various different kind of cartoons and graphics. And again, if we use that settings button, there's some really cool tricks that we can do in here. Let's say we wanted to filter it to show us only any options that are in red. We can click on that. And let's say that we only wanted to see the free ones. We can click on that and then apply filters. Now that does limit our options. I mean, that's not surprising really because we've asked for the free ones and we've asked for red cats. There can't be that many red cats really, can they? So let's just go back. Let's remove that red and just have a look at all the free ones. And you see here as well, you've also got animated. Um, you've got static and animated. Now, if you look at animated, you can see that they're all moving. Now this would be absolutely no use whatsoever if you were just creating a picture or a YouTube thumbnail. But as we're creating a video, it's actually quite useful. You can add these little graphics in as well. So if there's any graphics that you find that you like, you can just find them, click on them, and it will add it into your video. Now one other graphic that I think works really, really well with videos as well is if you scroll down, you've actually got these charts. We just click on see all. Now this is a really good way of kind of representing data and putting some facts on the screen and keeping people's interest. So you've got these different types here. So I'm just going to click on this one. Now do you see that's basically just put a load of um, little um, humans on there. Now this is called a pictogram. Now we can actually change what icon we're using. So we've got various different options in here. So you could actually put cars or trees or stars or whatever it is that you want. I'm just going to keep it to the set default one. You can change the color scheme that you're using. So you can amend the options at the top here. So you could use red and gray or blue and gray. Like say you've got different options here. You can change it to whatever you want. Also at the bottom you've got these options. You've got total items. How many items are actually filled with the color and also how spaced out they are as well. So you might be thinking, well, that's great. How would that actually be useful? Well, I'll show you now. Let's just make that a little, uh, little bit lighter so it's easier to see. So your video, you could kind of put that data up there and then you could just put some text underneath it as well where you could say 12 out of 20 families own a cat. But again, there are other options in there. You can use pie charts. You can use these um, almost speedometer progress dials. There's lots of different things that you can do just to kind of put some data and information on the video as well. Now, one thing you might want to do is add a little call to action to tell people to subscribe to your channel. Now, if we go into videos, we can actually find some default ones from Canva that allow us to do this. So if you just type in subscribe, YouTube, it's gonna give you loads of these example ones. Now, you see these ones that are bright green? These are basically used with a more traditional video editor. It's called a green screen. So you would export that from Canva and import it into your video editing tool. And then you basically just mask out and hide the bright green. We don't have the ability to do that within Canva. So the only limitation you've got is really, you need to use one of the ones that's already a color that looks all right. I mean, we could use that one just as an example. Again, right click, set video as background, and we can change the timings again at the bottom. So if we just press play on our other video, and there you go. It's just got a little call to action. Sometimes people need to kind of subconsciously be told to subscribe, um, but yeah, it's just a little option that you can add in. So the next thing we're going to cover is animations. Now this is just a way to animate different effects. Now you might see this little button here with three circles that says animate. Now at the moment I'm just kind of clicked on this blank area. So that basically means that if I click on that animate button that is applying it to the entire slide. And there's two places that you can animate things. You can apply it to the entire slide or if you click on one component like this text for example we've got an animate button in there as well. So that would apply the animation that we choose just to that text. Now again, on the left-hand side, there's quite a lot of options. They've added loads of these over recent times. 
Um, again, you've got the crown for the premium ones. So if you're using a free account, you just want to focus on the ones that don't have the little crown. Now, one we could use is that bounce option. So if we just click on it, that means that the text will come down in that bounce effect. Again, we can change to page animations there as well. So we've got different types of effects, but what we can do is we can put one of these on. So what that should do is basically it should pan the page, but the text should have its own animation. And if we just go to the start of the slide, let's take a look. And there you have it. Now let's say that you wanted to add that same effect to every slide and you didn't really want to mess around doing different effects. If you just scroll down to the bottom, you've got this apply to all pages. So you can just tick that. Now every single page that you create now, that same pan effect will be applied. Next up is audio and this is really simple. Just click on audio on the left hand side, type in the type of audio that you want. So you're best to go off kind of a theme because these aren't going to be mainstream music that you hear on the charts. So if we just type in happy, that should give us some more upbeat music. And you can preview them. Again, you can have a look at free and pro. You can pick ones with vocals or just instrumentals. It's just about using these filters. And then if you click on one, it's just going to add that into your video. So I've just clicked on that one. You can see at the bottom, it's just adding it in now. Now, similar with videos, really, you can click on the left hand side and you can make sure that it doesn't start until a certain point in your video or even end. So let's say you wanted to use multiple tracks, but you wanted them to start and end at different times. Then you can do that from there as well. Equally, you can click on the adjust button and it does exactly the same. And again, press play if you want to preview it. Don't think that really works with cats, but there you go. Now, something that can work really well from Canva is an effect called mock-ups. Now, a mock-up is when you mock a picture or a video onto a different device. And I'm going to quickly show you as an example. So I'm just going to click on photos. I'm going to find a cat photo. Let's use this one. Once you've got a photo highlighted on the left hand side, you've got this effects button. And the option we want to choose is this smart mock-ups and click on see all. Now this shows us different devices and basically this is like say this is an effect that we can do where we impose that picture onto a different device. So let's say that we want to use, um, let's use this laptop maybe. Let's use this desktop even. We just click on the desktop and there you go. It's imposed our picture that we had before onto the actual desktop and we can just resize that if we wish. Now the only problem is you cannot add videos that way, so we have to do that slightly differently. So if you go to elements and then scroll down and you want to go to frames and click on see all. Now in the frames, you've got less options, but there are a couple that you've got. So you've got, again, there's a desktop, a laptop, and we've got this mobile phone as well. So if we just expand that, and what we want to do is we want to add a video into this. So let's go to videos. Again, let's try and find a cat one. Now we want a vertical video because a horizontal one's probably gonna cut too much off. Now you can see in the previews which ones are vertical and which ones are horizontal. So let's use that one. Now we clicked on that and it's put it onto our canvas. Now if we just click and drag that onto that phone where that frame is, it'll then drag it across. If you wanna resize it, double click and you can expand it in there as well. But again, if we press play, and there you have it. So that's two ways of doing mock-ups. So what you could do is you could have your mock-up on one side of the screen and you could put some of your facts and information on the other side. Now, do you know when you get to the end of a YouTube video and the person that's presenting turns around and says, the video on screen next is gonna help you with this and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. They basically give you a call to action. That's called a YouTube outro. Now again, a little bit like that subscribe call to action, Canva has got some really good outros that you can use yourself. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on templates and in there, we're just gonna type outro and that's gonna give us all these sample ones. I'm just going to show you exactly what I mean. Now I'm just going to choose this one because this one's free and I said that I'd show you everything that you can do for free. There are some really good ones in there. 
Now, there's nothing to stop you from recreating all this from scratch, but look how much work it saves you. They've put the little animated buttons in, they've put the text in, they've put the windows. So normally on a YouTube video, when you upload it right at the end, it asks you to add some end cards in, and you basically tell it then whether you want to show the viewer your latest video or a specific video, whether you want them to have a subscribe button. There's different options, and this is where you line it up with the end of your video. So what I would always do is at the very end of your video, just have this screen on for about 15 seconds, 10, 10 to 15 seconds really. And again, just rename it, make it appropriate to yourself. You can change the colors just because these are just rectangles and circles and you can do exactly whatever it is that you need to do. Now everything I've shown you so far follows the same concept. You've got to look at these as like different scenes and frames to your video. So it could be the subscribe call to action, it could be the, um, the main introduction, it could be each of the facts. It's basically just lots of different scenes that you set with various different videos, text effects and animation. It's really simple once you get the hang of it. Now for those of you that just want to play music over your video and the facts come up on screen and you don't want any voiceover, then you're done, that's it. It's as simple as that. But for those of you that want to add some context and some actual audio and voiceover to the video, then there's a really cool feature that we can do. Now one thing to take note of is so far in this video, we've been changing all of our timings manually. So whether it was by dragging these actual um, scenes and making them longer or shorter, or whether it was adjusting the length of the actual video, we've manually had to do that. So if you want to then add a voiceover, you've got to really make sure that your timing's perfect. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that's brand new to Canva that will help you get this absolutely spot on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on these three buttons at the top and we're going to use this present and record button. Then click on go to recording studio. So where this is really good is that you can actually add notes to the right hand side as well so no one else will see this this is like your presenter mode so if you just want some visual clues so that you know where you're up to and what you've got to say you can just add them in here but also anything that i say now is being recorded on this presentation so you're doing everything at your own pace and you're putting the your own information on there and you when you're ready to move on to the next slide then you just click on the arrow and move on to the next one and again, you add in whatever information, you talk about that slide, you talk about that fact, and then you click on the arrow and move on to the next one, and so on. Once you've finished, you press end recording, and that'll then allow you to download that video. So as you can see, that's a really excellent way where you're not reliant on timings. It's all gonna be that your slide will not move to the next slide until you press the button. Therefore, you don't have to panic about the timings. You can add in all of the audio that you need to, and you can control the pace of the video. So it's a really, really good option that they've added in. Now the final thing to do is just download your video ready to upload to YouTube. And that is as simple as clicking the download button, changing the file type to MP4 video and pressing download. And then it will combine all of the different scenes and slides together and create one MP4 file ready to upload to YouTube. Now I hope that helps. Canva's a really, really good tool for any of your kind of design and graphics needs, but it's also getting better and better and can actually be genuinely used to create YouTube videos too. I'll see you on the next video.